into Greece. Here we have the landmarks, major landmarks of Greece. These correlate with a little pin map that we have down here that you can pin the major cities and landmarks along with where it is on the continent of Europe. Then over here on our sturdy little wooden man, we have um, some of the interesting fun facts about Greece on little ring cards. Here we have a short story of Dialys and Icarus, how Dialys makes these wings and Icarus flies too close to the sun and ultimately is lost in the sea. Greek mythology. Then over here we have a 3D model of one of the windmills in Mykonos made out of skewer sticks and paper. Here we have uh, one of the evil eye pendants that um, is traditionally worn to ward off the evil eye. Then we have a placemat poster of some of the major landmarks, information about Greece, holidays. Under here is a coloring of the map that um, students can color. Some of the 12 major Olympians. So there's 12 cards. They have facts on the back about each one. And students can learn about the Olympians, which are the Greek gods. Some ancient persons, they're on little stands. Kind of what an illustration of what they might look like. We have the model of the Parthenon, which is on the Acropolis in Athens. Um, this is what it pretty much looks like today. They are working on making it or restore it as much as possible, the restoration process. Um, these are made from uh, hundreds of different images because of the location of this building on the Acropolis. It's kind of hard. There's a lot of like trees or just the angle itself is kind of challenging to get the whole thing in one picture. So this is a vectorized image of all those different images. And then as you can see, the inner portion, um, a lot of it's just in ruins, the inner columns, the procession. And then here we have the different parts of the Parthenon, especially the front of what it used to look like prior to um, its destruction in the 1600s. Children can learn the parts of that. Here's some of the major I guess you could say the top favorites of Greek history, both ancient and current. Um, then down here, we have some more fun activities. We have these Greek theater masks, which I'm kind of stuck here. <laughs> I won't take them out, but oh, there we go. Um, they can be used just kind of held in front of the child's face. They can do like an impromptu theater. And basically back in the day, they used to have about 50 different types of major masks. And now traditionally there's the comedy and the tragedy. And you can see the tragedy one. And basically they rec um, represent some of those range of human emotions. And we have an ancient lyre. And this is an instrument uh, traditionally made out of a turtle shell, but this is one uh, younger children can use as lacing work. Um, this is an ancient toy. It was also used as part of a religious ritual. It's basically a whirly gate. It's called the iron X and the strings are pulled after it's been twisted and it goes faster. And these are ancient Greek pottery um, and the geometric that was the early version. And then over time they started adding pictures, but these, um, as you can see, were folded in half, cut out. And then my kiddos use these patterns to help trace. And then I helped a little bit too, but students can utilize these patterns and practice their writing skills and copying. And then as far as architects, um, three main uh, columns were in use, the Ionic, Corinthian, and Doric. 
and these are some examples so students can match with the cards directly on you know, just place them in the appropriate place and then there's some information that's also included and then back to our topographic well it's not even topographical it's kind of obviously not 3d but uh some pinning work uh, whether it's the um cities or the landmarks and then up here you can see the Greek flag in the appropriate spot in Europe. Then over here we have the Olympian olive wreath. Um, this can practice some fine motor skills, the patterns, there's three different slightly different shapes of different leaves uh, cut out of felt and then um, little holes are punched into them and then we use pipe cleaners to thread them. The students can make a little hat um, kind of like the Olympians used to wear, aware, but promotes fine motor skills and um, creativity. Then we have a uh, catapult. This actually will fling things pretty far, actually, so make sure they're soft and doesn't destroy the inside of the house. Um, but this is one of the ancient war uh, tools that were used. And then here's the Trojan horse made out of a toilet roll and popsicle sticks or craft sticks has little printables um, as well. And then we have the Trojan soldiers that can be placed inside. Now this can be used for counting work um, or just talking about the historical significance. And then we have hoplite armor. This is what an ancient Greek soldier usually was outfitted with and what each piece was called. Then down here we have some of the more popular uh, philosophers. I've only included four just because there's quite a few and I uh, wanted to focus on <clears throat> excuse me the more common ones. We have Plato, Socrates, and Aristotle and then because I'm in healthcare I had to add Hippocrates because he's the father of modern medicine. He had a lot of um, big influence on what we utilized today. So we have these outlines. These are little illustrations that can be used um, as mats and I call them Play-Doh mats. A Play-Toe or Play-Doh um, using Play-Doh or clay um, to recreate the features of these and then obviously they have the um, comparison to these cards and then there's information on the back about each philosopher um, as well. Then have utilized the abacus. Um, Greek was one of the main ones that did. Um, the red recommend or represents the ones place, tens place, hundreds place, and thousands place. And this is just made out of popsicle sticks with etched. I don't know if you can see it so well. Um, to keep the strings in place. And then these are clip cards. Um, to test the students' knowledge of the different numbers. And as you can see, they're all different. Um, some of them are bigger numbers, some of them are smaller numbers. And just to kind of recognize the different place holders of numbers. And then the student can say, okay, there's 300 and, or 336. So your correct number is 36. Or for another example, they could be like, okay, that's 2,396, so 2,396. And then they can utilize these little clips and clip the appropriate number. So a um, little hand work as well. Then here we have um, some of the animals of Greece. Um, these are three part cards, so kind of on the Montessori trend, dolphin, that's the um, national animal, so a bunch of different animals. These can also be utilized with um, little miniature animals as well, but it's kind of hard to find specific ones. And this is a sensory bin. Um, it's also kind of like a STEM activity where students can guess if an item would be attracted to the magnet because, and this fits into Greece because Greece is attributed with discovering magnets because a little shepherd boy apparently found a magnetic rock that was attracted to his sandal and started the whole everything, what is magnet, what is not. So, and then the students can test their theory, like, oh, did it pick it up or not, as you can see. So, 
Um, then over here we have the life cycle of the dolphin. This is a little spinner card that can, um, as you can see, there's a calf, and then over here, well, it goes the other way, but birth, and then, then the calf. <laughs> and so it talks about the life cycle. And then here we have the parts of the dolphin. There's also another version that has empty squares for the students to match the little cards there onto. And then some tracing work as well. What's really cool is there's a felt puzzle. This is very simple to make. Um, the pattern um, is also included in the unit study and students can use this to put the parts together and then recognize which part is what and label. So you can take, all right, this is the melon. That's on the top of the head. And then last but not least, we have the Euro, which is the current currency that's used in Greece. Um, some of the paper money, <laughs> um, metal money, and then examples of the different Euro uh, notes. Obviously, these are just, I don't want to say they're fake, they are fake. <laughs> they're illustrations. And then here we have some language cards, um, some common phrases, things that might be helpful to know how to say if one was in Greece. Thankfully, a lot of Greek people can speak English. Um, and then, last but not least, we have our alphabet cards. So, oh my god. You all have heard that. <laughs> it's all based on the Greek alphabet. There's 24 total. And each of these cards have the capital and lowercase version. So students could learn the different letters and then be able to recognize them on the language cards. 